Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Keith and you're watching Barbara's Auto Help. Today I'm going to be replacing the rear wheel bearing on my 05 Honda Odyssey. Now, this is probably going to be similar for all of your Generation 3 Honda Odysseys. Verify that in your manual, of course, but uh, as far as I know, this should be similar, if not the same. Also, I've got a couple of links down in the description to other videos. Um, one's on a uh, where I replace a rear wheel bearing on a Saturn View, and I'll go through a little bit of the diagnostic process on that to find out if it is actually bad or not. Uh, you're welcome to watch that, and I've also got a link to another video that gives you an example of what a bad wheel bearing sounds like. So feel free to check all that out in your spare time. The links are down in the description as I said and without any further ado let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing we need to do is remove this caliper and the bracket and the way we're going to do that is we're going to go back here on the back side there's two bolts one on the top one on the bottom here they have uh, 17 millimeter heads on them we're going to loosen those bolts out take them out and the whole caliper with the bracket will come right off. I always recommend to wear nitro gloves when working on vehicles. It helps to protect your skin. And also be sure to wear safety glasses when you're doing this. Now once this bolt comes out, the caliper and the bracket may want to fall down on you. Hold on to it with your other hand here so that way it doesn't fall. I'm just going to work it off just like that. Now we're just going to set our caliper and our bracket right over here next to that, that shock there. And to secure it, you can use a wire coat hanger. All right, so I got it secured. I got the wire coat hanger through the uh, the bracket here, and I got the pointed edges facing that way. This one's facing up. Just watch out for these uh, edges here. You can poke yourself in the eyeball. Um, now, the reason I'm doing this is is to prevent the uh, the caliper from falling down. Uh, you don't want to do anything to strain this this brake hose here. They're not like totally brittle, but you don't want to put any weight on them or pull on them or or try to damage them in any way so we're just trying to protect the hose there that's all we're doing and just to prevent myself from poking myself in the eye <laughs> I'm gonna put a towel right on top of that now we have to get the rotor off and you've probably noticed you got these two screws here that hold the rotor on before you go to take these screws out it may be beneficial for you to go ahead and spray around the edges of those screws with some penetrating oil and let it sit for about 30 minutes or so. And if you got one of these, this is a, an impact driver. These are very handy for these. Uh, this is my preferred method of getting these screws off because they can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. But you put your impact driver on there like that and you apply a little bit of, little bit of counterclockwise uh, force to it. And you just tap the back side of it with a hammer like this. And that'll loosen up that screw for you and do the same thing with the other one there now if you don't have one of these uh, you can try just a regular screwdriver but uh, it may not work for you I'm gonna put a link down in the description to another video that shows you how to get these out without having an impact driver so you're welcome to watch that too all right so we got our screws out now we're ready to take our uh, rotor off and I should have done this before but uh, you want to spray around this hub center here with some penetrating oil too maybe down in these holes here and uh, around the lug studs now um, that's going to break off any rust or try to dissolve any rust that uh, might be built up in between the rotor and the hub and it's going to make it easier for you to get this rotor off okay now if your rotor just doesn't slide off like it is for me you may have to tap it a couple of times around the edges between the lug studs to get that rust broke loose but uh, as for me it's coming right off don't hate <laughs> don't hate it. I know some of you are gonna have a hard time getting these things off but anyway sorry now we have our uh, hub exposed and boy this thing feels really rough when I spin it I can hear it once we have it exposed there then we're gonna go towards the back side here let me get the lighting set up for you okay we're gonna have four bolts that we have to take out and they all have 17 millimeter heads on them. Let's go ahead and get our bolts loose. Good golly. Ah. Woo. They're a little bit tight. Once 
once you have them loosened up, you can take them out by hand. Now I found on this bolt right here, a uh, shallow head socket works the best with just a plain ratchet. Uh, no extension or anything is needed. So there's not a lot of room between that bolt head and that shock there. All right, bolts are loose. We should be able to pull our hub right out. Let's go ahead and pull our hub dress away out. Wow, it just came right on out there. Make sure that this area is perfectly clean before you put your new one back in, and it is. Uh, they, they come with a little seal on the back side of the hub there um, that keeps it clean like that in there. And be sure that your new your new hub has that seal on it also. All right, these are your your uh, hub bolts here. And there's four of them, of course. I like to put a little bit of Loctite on them, as you see that I've already done there. Um, I would also suggest uh, replacing the fasteners if you can. New bolts is always a good idea. A lot of manufacturers actually re require that the bolts be replaced when doing something like this. Check your repair manual to verify if your bolts need to be replaced or not. All right, let's place our new hub bearing in the hole there. And once we got our hub bearing, in the hole there, we're going to go ahead and start our uh, bolts. And always start them out by hand to make sure they're threaded correctly. You don't want to cross thread. Let's go ahead and torque down our bolts. And this is a torque wrench I'm using here. And you'll need to reference your repair manual for the torque specification. And a little bit of a side note here guys, you do have some washers that go in between the caliper bracket and the, the knuckle here. Be sure that these don't fall off. You shouldn't have a problem with them falling off, but make sure they're there before you go to put your uh, brake caliper bracket back on. Before you put your rotor back on, take a wire brush and kind of clean all the rust off on the inside here where it mates up with the, the hub. That way you get a nice flush and uh, a good mate between the hub and the rotor when you put the rotor back on. All right, let's go ahead and go back up with our rotor. Now, you gotta make sure that your screw holes line up and uh, that they're in the correct position because if they're not, then this little rubber grommet right here may come in contact with the uh, the surface of the hub there and you, you won't get a good mate between the rotor and the hub there. So, as long as these screw holes may match up, you should be okay. Let's put our screws back in. Right, let's go ahead and put our caliper and bracket back on. Now something you want to pay attention to guys, uh, make sure that these pads are fully seated in the grooves of the bracket and make sure they're seated up against the, uh, the piston and also the opposing side of the caliper correctly before you put this on. Be sure that your, uh, your brake hose is not kinked or uh, corkscrewed or anything like that before you put it on too. That'll cause problems. All right, and I did put a little Loctite on these bolts too. Uh, refer to your repair manual to see if these bolts require replacing or not. If they do, I would recommend replacing them. And there is a torque specification for these bolts also. Refer to your repair manual for that information too. All right, we got them started by hand and they're all the way down. Let's go ahead and torque them. Well, that's pretty much it guys uh, be sure to clean this up really good with some brake clean before you put your tire back on make sure the uh, front and the back side of the rotor is nice and clean and um, of course you got to put your tire back on <laughs> and torque it down too I um, appreciate you guys watching please see the description for more information about this project and a disclaimer uh, if you have any questions comment down below uh, I also may have some links down in the description to some other videos that will be helpful to you Please take some time to look at those too if you get a chance. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks.